This uh, video explains the mathematical and physical modelling that's um, been used in order to uh, perform the centrifugal filtration simulation which uh, we have provided at this particular um, website and it's based on equations that are all in the book Fundamentals of Particle Technology uh, which is available at the same website um, as a free download. We have to start off by considering what we have as a centrifugal filter very carefully. Uh, first of all let's tackle the relatively simpler bit which is we're going to use the usual, usual approach that we can define something like a, a pressure drop or an effective pressure drop where the total pressure drop is equal to the pressure drop over the two components the the filter pressure drop over the filter cake and that's simply added to the pressure drop over the filter medium and that gives the total pressure drop okay so what do i mean the pressure drop over the filter cake is what we have just here so here is the filter cake the forming filter cake here is atmospheric pressure the other side of the filter medium so that is our pressure drop over the filter cake, delta P cake. The pressure drop over the filter medium is fairly obviously just what's over the filter medium down here. So that's delta P uh, filter medium. Um, okay, so that's the resistance over the filter medium. I would normally call that, well, becomes RM in our later in our later. Uh, equations. So that's one aspect. We're, we're adding the pressures together like we do for conventional filtration. Uh, there's something much more important for our modeling to consider here in the or, or, or you, novel uh, which is the radii. The outer radius of the centrifuge doesn't change. The outer radius of the centrifuge is where the filter medium is the inner radius or the radius of the liquid layer by and large doesn't normally change because there'll be a wear or something which which dictates the amount of liquid or slurry that can be put into the filter but what does change very very significantly is the cake radius because if we're effectively filtering then we would expect that cake radius to decrease which is counterintuitive you kind of expect cake surfaces to build up but you've got to bear in mind we're in a circular geometry here so that circular geometry is critically important to keep in mind so we're expecting RC to decrease as it goes towards the central axis here of the rotation so here is our central axis here is our here is our rotation going round and round RC will be decreasing uh, basically what you have looking as a plan view looking down on it is uh, that's R naught here is R L the inner radius and R C is anywhere between the two I mean here is our current cake in here okay but RC is moving inwards okay I've emphasized that quite a lot what's the significance of RC moving inwards well if we're trying to now define the area the filtration area if RC is moving inwards that filtration area is decreasing all the time so unlike our planar geometry filters we have to do some little bit complicated mathematics to take into account the variation in area in changing in these sort of cylindrical coordinate geometry okay well the we talked about the, the total pressure drops rather than call that delta pt i'll just call it delta p wherever there's a delta p it is the total pressure drop so here we have the pressure drop over the cake which is changing with the area so we know we've got a little bit of an area question to consider and here is the pressure drop over the filter medium 
okay and it's lurking behind the equation here is of course Darcy's law this has been derived from Darcy's law you can see the der derivation in in the book uh, it is at this stage exactly the same as the conventional filtration equations Q being volume flow rate A being area RM being the resistance of the filter medium uh, V being the cumulative volume of filtrate uh, little c being the dry cake mass per unit volume of filtrate and alpha being our specific resistance or the filter cake specific resistance whatever you want to call it and mu is the uh, viscosity of the filtrate just the same as conventional filtration um, okay we know we're going to have a little bit of an issue with, with area so uh, the easiest area is the external area a naught which is uh, according to um, our usual geometric uh, considerations 2 pi r is going to be the circumference and then we need the height that this is uh, effective over so if we just quickly nip back to the um, centrifuge here we go here is the the height of the centrifuge so we have 2 pi r or 2 pi r r naught times by the height is going to be the external area of the filter well I've been talking about pressure drop okay total pressure drop but this is a, a centrifugal filter so what how do we make sense out of this concept of the total pressure drop in a, in a similar sort of way to uh, what we have in terms of uh, static pressure in static pressure we have the equation depth times density sometimes called h rho g h rho g okay so that is the uh, pressure for uh, a column of water h rho g pressure of a column of water here we don't have static pressure we have centrifugal pressure okay and the the analogous equation to h rho g is what you see here you can see actually there's quite a lot of similarities to it we still have the density just there that's the row the row term we have a linear dimension term which in this instance is the radius okay and uh, then we have an acceleration term and it's this acceleration term that changes massively because in our equation here the acceleration term is r radius again times by omega squared okay um, and that gives us our r squared terms here and the omega squared term here so they all come from the centrifugal what we call the centrifugal acceleration and that is the major driving force in the system so there is no actual physical overpressure as such we're talking really about an equivalent pressure across that filter cake due to the centrifugal um, system that we have set up so if we come back to this basic diagram just here this effective pressure across the filter cake is due to the driving force of the liquid pushing pu pushing in that direction through the filter cake okay so there's no actual overpressure in terms of a, a gas it is actually due to the pressure from the centrifugal head the rotation pressure that's pushing the liquid through through the filter cake okay well we know we're going to need a constitutive equation for that area of the filter which is changing all the time so here we have uh, just here we have the plan view again and this is the area of the filter and the radius of the cake which is becoming smaller and smaller all the time 
we need to do a material balance. OK, um, let's go through this material balance. If we take a certain volume of feed going into the filter, then we have to have the same volume after the filtration. And the volume of the filter cake we can call H times by A. OK, that's the volume of the, the filter cake that's been formed at the end of the, the centrifugal filtration. Uh, a is our imaginary area because you can imagine taking this circular um, filter cake and breaking it open and just laying it out as a sort of flat surface. So we have uh, a height and an area which multiplied two together would give you the volume. Uh, what about the filtrate? Okay, well that's the cumulative volume of filtrate is V, so that's uh, V. So the volume at the start and the vol will be equal to the volume at the end. That's the material balance. So here is our total volumes, V plus HA. What about the solids though? Okay, well that's CF, concentration by volume of solids. So CF is the um, dimensionless volume fraction of the solids. So CF times by the total volume that we had at the start gives us our volume of solids. The volume of solids filtered is going to be C, where C is the volume concentration of the cake uh, that's been formed times HA. So C times by HA is the volume of solids in the filter cake. CF times by this, uh, this thing on the right hand side here is the volume of solids that we started with and they must be equal. So that is a material balance on the solids. At the moment it's a, a volume material balance but of course if we were to multiply that by solids density on both sides, then that would be a mass balance in terms of kilograms. We don't bother doing that, but it is a mass balance or a material balance. It's just that we've simplified it with that by taking the density out. What we're aiming for here, you see, is somehow coming up for an equation for our variable A as a function of the volume of filtrate that has been filtered. We go one step beyond that. We actually get the equation for the radius out of it rather than just A, as you'll see uh, in a moment. So solving our previous equation for HA, bearing in mind that it was on both sides of the, um, of the equation that we were looking at, HA then comes to equal this, which is the concentration of the feed over the concentration of the filter cake minus the concentration of the feed times by the volume of liquid filtered, the cumulative volume of fil liquid filtered. Uh, H, don't forget, is the height of the centrifuge and A is this area which we know is changing all the time. OK, um, we can also conceptualise, if you look at the diagram over here, perhaps that, that might, might help, we can also conceptualise that HA is equal to H times by the area, which is going to be pi times the radius squared. In fact, um, that's the annular area, the present. OK, so by rearranging our equation here and substituting in for HA into here, we can come up with an equation that links RC down here with the ratio of the concentrations present and more importantly the uh, a term that has the filtrate volume in. So we can deduce what the uh, radial, where the radial position is of that filter cake as a function of the filtrate volume. Okay, so where does that leave us with? Right. Well, this was our original equation, originally from Darcy's law and valid for filtration as well as centrifug centrifugal filtration. Um, this is what we have as the working equation that is solved in the centrifuge simulation. So Q 
is the volume flow rate, meters cubed per second in SI units. And the meters cubed per second in SI units is equal to what is the total pressure drop, delta P, and then um, the pressure drop really that's due to what's over the filter cake, bearing in mind that the area is changing all the time, hence we have to take into account that variation in area, which is primarily driven by that variation in RC. Everything else here, at least those written here, is a constant. We have a constant viscosity, constant specific resistance of the cake, constant concentration of the cake by volume fraction. So this is assuming an incompressible cake. Solids density, uh, constant height of the centrifuge, that's not changing. Um, and then we have the viscosity again over here, the medium resistance, which will be constant, the height of the fil uh, filtering centrifuge, again constant, and R0 constant. So everything's, everything's constant. The only thing that's changing during the process is RC. RC is getting smaller as the RC um, approaches the central axis of the centrifuge. So this term is varying courtesy of RC becoming smaller. Okay, so that is the equation that is used in the simulation. We need to calculate the cake radius at each increment that we solve the equation for. Uh, we could calculate the cake concentration at each increment if there was compressibility because we could relate the effective pressure to the cake concentration if we had a constitutive equation and we could even do the same for the specific resistance for the alpha value. Again if we had a constitutive equation between alpha and pressure that would enable us to calculate the specific resistance uh, at each increment. Um, so, that's, so they may be a function of the pressure due to com compressibility. In the simulation that is in fact done. There are new values of concentration and specific resistance calculated at each increment. Okay, so how do we uh, conduct the simulation? Well, we have a, a fixed time over which we're going to do the simulation and then break it up into a certain number of increments. And then at each increment, we will calculate the um, cake radius using the volume of filtrate at the previous time increment. Just move that up a little bit at the previous time increment. Uh, that enables us to calculate the Q that we looked at in the previous equation. And once we've got the Q, the filtrate rate, then by knowing the difference in time, our time increment, we can calculate the filtrate volume that has been filtered in that increment. Um, and we can carry on doing that in a cyclic sort of way, calculating the new radius and therefore the new area, um, until eventually we've gone through all the increments and we then we come up with the final, at the final time, what the final volume of filtrate is. If we know the dry cake mass per unit volume of filtrate and we know what the filtrate volume is, then that gives us the actual mass of cake that's been produced. Uh, so that gives us the, the productivity. Um, this little note just here is uh, a note to say that it, it's possible to do a little bit of fitting of the practical data from a plant, from an in industrial or maybe even a laboratory uh, centrifuge in order to deduce um, the specific resistance. So from operating data on a plant it is possible to work backwards to work out what the specific resistance is of a material. Why would we want to do that? Well that would give us the inputs that we need for a simulation uh, which you can see how we can use simulation uh, in the next slide. So what does that, what does that give us in the end? Um, well, simulation provides information on the throughputs that we can get, uh, both the filtrate volume and the dry solids that comes out of the filter. Uh, and that's a simulation that enables us to look at the effect of changing the rotation speed 
obviously how long you leave it on the filter for. Um, you can look at different geometries of the filter as well, because um, if we know the con all the constitutive equations, there's no reason why you can't change the radius and the height. Uh, you can even go on and look at uh, the washing stage, if we need to wash a solute away from the filter cake, and even the drainage, if we then want to spin the filter cake as dry as possible from any of the residual solvent or, or wash solvent. And that gives us, therefore, the overall productivity, what the mass per unit time is. Clearly for these two, the washing and the draining stage stages, we do actually need some uh, additional models. For example, the, the Zeitsch model for, um, for the uh, washing and the drainage. Sorry, for the drainage, rather. Um, the Zeitsch model is actually given in the Fundamentals of Particle Technology book. Um, and there is, in fact, a spreadsheet for the Zeitsch model on the, uh, on the website, a downloadable spreadsheet uh, on the website. So you can see how the Zeitsch model works for filtering centrifuges and predicting the uh, moisture of a drained or fully drained cake as a function of rotation speeds. And that's basically how the modelling takes place on the, um, on the website for filtering centrifuges.